In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up Synology Drive Share Sync. Now, Synology Drive Share Sync will keep two separate shared folders in sync on two different Synology NASes. So this is generally used to keep two different devices in sync. And what it allows the users to do is each user would basically have a local copy of the file that they're working on that will then sync to the other Synology NAS as soon as it's updated. So you'll have two of the same versions of the file on two separate Synology NASes that will automatically sync to the other NAS as soon as it's updated. This is a great option for small businesses, especially if you have multiple NAS devices and you're using Synology Drive. If you're not using Synology Drive, I'd probably suggest that you check out either Shared Folder Sync or uh, snapshot replication, which is probably my preferred option for that scenario. But if you're using Synology Drive and you want to sync a team folder to two different NASes, you can do that utilizing this. So the first thing that you have to do is make sure that you have Synology Drive set up and configured on both Synology NAS devices. If you don't, I'll leave a pop-up now for a video on how to set up Synology Drive. But once you set that up, you can then open up the Synology Drive ShareSync application, and then you're gonna be brought to a screen that shows you how to keep the NAS server synchronized. So you can select Start Now, and then the first thing that you're gonna be brought to is the information for the remote Synology NAS. So the ShareSync server is actually gonna exist on one Synology NAS. So if you set it up on your local NAS and you're syncing to a remote NAS, the remote NAS isn't gonna actually have that ShareSync task it will only exist on the local NAS. So you only have to set it up once. But in this field here, you have three main ways that you can connect to that remote Synology NAS. The first is by DDNS hostname. The second is by the Quick Connect ID if you're using Quick Connect. And the third is by VPN. So if you're using OpenVPN, you can actually connect that remote NAS back to your local NAS right inside of DSM. So I do have a video for that and I'll leave a pop-up for that now, but you do have to be using OpenVPN for that option. I'm just putting in a local IP address for this because I'm just showing you this locally, but generally you're gonna want this to be remote NAS. If you do wanna set this up locally for whatever reason, you can put the local IP address there as well, but generally this is something that you're gonna be using for a local NAS and a remote NAS. After that, you can then put in a username and password and then you can select next. And if you receive a connection error and you are using Synology's firewall, you have to make sure on the remote NAS that there is an allow rule created for the Synology Drive server port, which is TCP port 6690. There are other issues that you could run into, especially if you're using something like the DDNS hostname, because there could be port forwarding issues, but just make sure you have that firewall rule created. And then at the next screen here, you're gonna have to select the shared folders that you wanna sync. Now this is important because these shared folders are set up on the destination Synology NAS as team folders. So it's not gonna show all of your uh, remote Synology NAS's shared folders. It's only gonna show the ones that are set up as team folders. So if you're viewing this list here and you don't see the shared folder that you wanna sync, you have to go onto that destination Synology NAS, you have to open up the Synology Drive admin console, and then you have to go in and enable that as a team folder. So after you select all of your folders, you can proceed. Now it's important to understand that you can select multiple folders there. And when you get to this next screen here, you will have multiple folders if you selected multiple folders. The thing that I wanna point out is if you select a folder and then you select edit, you're gonna have a bunch of options here that you should definitely look through. The first thing you're gonna see is the folder location. So since you're syncing a folder from a remote Synology NAS to a local Synology NAS, you might not have the folder that you're syncing on that local Synology NAS. So this first option here is just saying that since the folder does not exist on this local machine, it's gonna automatically create it. Now, if you wanna select a local folder to sync these files to, you can do that here in this dropdown menu. Keep in mind that whatever exists in that folder is automatically gonna have the destination information written to it. So it's probably a good idea to just keep it in sync using the same name However, if you wanna go through and create a new folder with a different name, you can definitely do that. Then at the bottom, you're gonna see the folders that will automatically synchronize when you create this task. And if you wanna uncheck certain items, you can do that here. So you can either uncheck certain individual files or you can do entire subfolders. 
The key point here is that you don't have to actually sync everything. You can select only certain things if you'd like to. The second tab is just for file filters. So if you want to filter specific files and only uh, include or exclude those certain files, so like images, for example, you can do that in this option here. But if you want to sync everything, you can ignore that and then you can select sync mode. And this tab is actually very important. So the first thing that you're going to see is file sync mode. And this is going to determine if the files should just be synced themselves, excluding permissions and metadata, or if you want to sync the actual privileges as well. So by default, it only syncs the files. You'll then have to manage the permissions on the local NAS. But if you wanted to actually sync the privileges, you can do that as well. So you just have to make sure that the same user accounts would exist on both NASs. Because at that point, if you sync the privileges and the user account doesn't exist, it's not like they're gonna be able to access it anyway. So I imagine that that's why Synology has the default as to only sync the files. However, if you are using it for that purpose, you can definitely select that there. Now the second section is gonna be for the sync direction. So by default, it's gonna be two-way sync. What that means is that if a file is added, removed, or updated on the local and or the destination Synology NAS, it will then sync to the other. So what I mean by that is if you add a file to the local Synology NAS, it will automatically sync to the destination Synology NAS. If a file is added to the destination Synology NAS, it will automatically sync back to the local Synology NAS. That's the two-way sync. If you only want to download the data from the remote Synology NAS, you have to use that second option there. So that's only going to download any of the changes on that remote Synology NAS. If you add anything to the local NAS, it will not sync to the destination NAS. Finally, the third option is to only upload the data to the remote Synology NAS. So that means that anything that exists on the local NAS will automatically sync to the remote NAS, but anything that is on the remote NAS will not automatically sync to the local NAS. So it's just the complete opposite of the second option. Finally, at the bottom here, if you're using the BTRFS file system, which you definitely should be, you can keep the enable advanced consistency check enabled. Finally, you can select OK, you can edit any other folders that you might want to sync, and then you can select Done, which will set up the task. Now it's going to go through and it's going to sync everything from the local NAS to the remote NAS and from the remote NAS to the local NAS. So you have to be patient because depending on the file size, it might take some time to actually sync everything. You'll see that you can select the Synology Drive Share Sync icon in the top right, and it will tell you if it's syncing or if it's up to date. So that's one way that you can monitor it. Now that is the long and short of how you can set up Synology Drive Share Sync. At this point, the files will automatically sync back and forth from the local NAS to the remote NAS anytime there are changes, and both users will be editing local versions of each of their files. So that is a big performance benefit if you're editing larger files like video files, for example, because you're gonna be editing a local copy at all times. You're never gonna be editing a remote copy. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thanks, guys.